Come on, y'all. These guys get better every service. Oh, yeah, dude. It's <laughs> 11 o'clock now. We finna get crunk now. This is ha what happens. <laughs> hey, look, are you excited that he's here or what? Seriously, y'all. Come on. Thank you, guys. And I mean this, you know, people give me a little hard time about, man, do you really believe he's the most godly guy you've ever met? Yes. And you will see why when we get out of here today, because I had a great morning. Uh, it's been a lot, a lot of fun, but I'm going to tell you, there's been a few tears in there. I had to work through it. So maybe we'll be okay this hour, but let me just tell you, thanks for getting up and making church today, man. Thanks for making it a priority. And again, I'm just so honored that you come and hang out with us, man. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, let me give you a little bit. Some of you are like, well, how did y'all really hook up? Well, this is a true story. This is a picture of us at the Do Good store. And this has been a couple of years ago. Now, Do Good store is open, by the way, today, if you want to go down there and help some people out. But they were in town, man, and they were playing the warehouse downtown. And I was like, Sonny, can you come and hang out, man? I just want to ask you some questions. And you were an influence in my life and talk, and you said yes. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, no, but no rock star says yes. You know what I'm saying? There's like people you got to call and management and all this. Other, but you're like, no, dude, whatever I can do to help. Why? Why would you do that back then? Why would you do it today? What's up with that? I, I just really love what you guys are doing. I think the gospel is that simple. Yeah. Do good. Yeah, Be good man. to one another. Love each other. Um, I'm on the road all the time, and so I always... Uh, appreciate the the church families that I've come to know and, and and I look forward to meeting with and I need that accountability and I love you know iron sharpens iron I love to be around people that love the Lord you, you guys were saying you're doing good things in your community whether it's homeless whether right. it's reaching the kids and uh, dude that's that's my heart so I just wanted to come and and not be anything just how can I serve you? How can I be a part of what you guys are doing? And, you, and then you take us there and you hooked up all my guys. and it was <laughs> Got to give them free yeah. stuff, man. Free merch, man. Don't hurt anybody. <laughs> you know, but this is what's so cool, man, is you just got to know. And I told my wife, my wife says I have a man crush. I do. All right, I'm going to be straight with y'all. <laughs> y'all can hate on me. Y'all can judge, whatever it is. But I'm going to tell you why. It's because, you know, I hadn't been around a lot. I did live in Nashville for a little bit. I was in Christian music for a little bit have friends that have made it, you know, they've done some things that are pretty big. But typically, Sonny, what happens is there is this arrogance and there's this pride and there's this, man, I'm the man. And, and you, you have a hard time working through all that. And I'm being genuine when I say this. When I met you, I told them after we got in the car, because we sat on the stage and if, we filmed that whole interview we did the first time and never showed it before just because I was trying to work through that. But I left and I said, dude, that dude is legit. There's not many people you meet that are that serious about their faith and that serious about honoring God in everything they do, whether it's family or on the stage or whatever. And I'm telling you, dude, thank you. And please put your hands together that he would give us this time today, man. I'm telling you. I mean it. You guys are awesome. When I tell you, many of you may be going, well, dude, how big a deal were they? I mean, does, did they really do anything? Trust me, when I tell you that POD was big, they were huge. Millions of albums have been sold, man. Tons of things that they've done with their life. Been on all kinds of tours. Toured with Ozzy Osbourne, dude, on the OzFest. You talking about next level? I say, what? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, they... I mean, y'all were in the, the place, man. You were on the show. It's not, name some of the people you've toured with. Give me some of the names that you've been on the road with, you know? I mean, we're, we're still... Um touring you know I try to balance out as much as I can with family um, but there's not a band out there that we haven't toured it's cool because we've been doing a lot of the European festivals and even now some of the older rock bands are making a comeback right so I think the other day or the summer in Texas like I think Scorpions headline yes. I was in a Here I in, am. in Europe <laughs> in Europe it's wild because um, you know I'm, we're a little we're heavy we could we right. play with some of the younger bands but then on the ticket you'll see as far as journey goes or oh, come you know, on, white snake and all these other when i was yes. a kid and um but there's there's not a band that we hey young people with. let me just say that's what music was music i know that they bands actually played stuff can i get an amen out there right <laughs> young people take note seriously what is really cool is i did a little research did a little you know looking over things and i've got a couple of videos we didn't show any others first uh just in the in the trailer we're going to go ahead and go with the first video uh, like New Year's Eve, MTV was a big deal back in the day. They used to actually play videos and actually used to have all kind of things. But you had like New Year's Eve and all these things. I want to pull, show just a little clip from some of the things they've done, including like Carson Daly, which is pretty cool, TRL. So let's watch this and we'll talk about it a little bit. Let me see you. One, two, three, come on. Let me body get up. Well, let me body get up. That's the way we get the party started here, close out the year 2001. P.O.D., great to be in the room with them. Close friends of ours, they've rocked this stage before. 
Happy New Year, brother. Marcos, Happy, happy New Year. New Year. The lines between hip hop and rock have been pretty blurry since Run DMC brought these sounds together years ago. Every year, the two camps get closer and closer together. Rock bands now include DJs and guitar solos are now coexisting over hip hop beats. We're honored to be here to present the nominees for best hip hop video. Yeah, dude. Come on, man. You're talking wow, VMAs, man. man. You're talking about, again, New Year's Eve, MTV, Rock and Jock. How, you know, that's some cool stuff. I mean, what is it like when you as a believer, you know, you're strong and you're trying to do it and you're thrown into all these worlds. Is it a pretty surreal thing? I mean, you never thought that it'd be you. What, I mean, what's it like? It, it's surreal. But it's, it's part of the journey. Um, I, I, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be in a band. That's not really my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not really a microphone guy and a camera. I really don't like all the attention on me. Um, but when I got saved, it was real. It was radical. Um, and the first thought was, how do, I, how do I get my friends saved? How do I tell my community, my neighborhood, that this Jesus has, has, has captured my heart? How do I do that? And then I was asked to be, and my cousin was in a band. They were playing the keg parties and right. local clubs, and they asked me if I wanted to try something different, a little rap, a little reggae. And it was nowhere on my radar that I'd ever want to do it, but I thought, I can get up there, I can grab that mic, and I can scream how much the Lord has radically changed my life. And that's really how it started. And I think the faithfulness, God just blessed us. And all of a sudden, we're playing outside of San Diego. We're playing in bigger venues. We started playing with well-known bands. Right. We did, then we did stuff independently and went on the road on our own. And then we signed to Atlantic Records. And, and the rest was just... Oh, yeah. Let me tell you something. Off. When I tell you it's history, if, if MTV used to play videos. I know that's shocking to young people. But I want to take you back because this is some of the stuff that I watched that I was like, oh, <laughs> yes. This is it because it was instrumental. You know, MTV had all kind of other stuff on. But then when you had something positive or you had some guys that, you know, it wasn't labeled as Christian music. Right. But it was like, man, they're there. Here's some of my favorite videos. And that may take you back as well. Check out these videos. And that's only four. I think we have like 20 some oh, videos. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, that's crazy. Those are some of my favorites, though. We were editing this week, and the whole office was just, <laughs> oh. and everybody, like old people, are like, what is wrong with y'all, man? I'm just telling you, if you grew up and you listened to music, you, uh, you got to know POD was huge, man. It influenced everybody. It's on MTV, man. You're in the midst of everything that's going on. And what was crazy to me is, again, the lyrics. And what you were saying in a culture that was saying all the wrong things, yeah. you know, it had the good music that was going on, but it was like, man, that's the positive lyrics and what was going on. How difficult was it when maybe the, you know, the record labels, I don't know if they tried to control that. I don't know how all that went down. Did y'all have total free to go, man, this is who we are. Yeah. Give us a little bit about that. Um, I mean, that's where I'm from. I mean, I, I, I speak the language of the streets, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't. I'm not hanging in the church and the hallelujah brothers and the amen as I get it. And I'm right. sensitive to all that stuff, but I, I communicate with real people. Right. And when music was a way, is the ultimate expression of communication. And in doing that, um, we had already built a, a fan base independently. I think when we got signed to Atlantic, we were saying this last service that rock and roll was birthed on rebellion. Mm -hmm. And so for us at the time to get up there and not this soft gospel type of music, but of street music that's in your face and is saying something it was it was powerful wow. and so they didn't restrict what we can say but you know you kind of like a like a poet or like an artist sometimes we get slack why don't you say jesus a million times in your right. song like, well because that's not how people communicate mm -hmm. but we can sit there and we can talk about things and and like art it directs them and our our whole vision from the beginning was to always just direct them to the cross right. in a way that these kids can you know can understand and so we get in your face we do our thing and um i think if anything we were more rebellious at the time when 9-11 happened our album right. dropped on 9-11 yeah that's a crazy story because yeah. 
September 11th, when tragedy happened, y'all were getting ready to drop the album on that day and yeah. had to postpone everything. I mean, it was kind of crazy. Tell us about that. What was up? Our album, which is our biggest album of our so. career, dropped on that 9-11. And, um, and at the time, I mean, that's not even important, but being the band that we are, being the, a band known of faith, being positive and love, and, you know, right. we were those guys... And at that time when, you know, especially America was looking for answers, mm -hmm. they didn't want to hear all the negative, you know, music, whether it was hip hop, whether it was rock and roll. There was only less than a handful of bands that they actually wanted to hear from. And right. POD was, was one of those bands because we were already doing that. You know, and for me, it's more of a testimony that we weren't trying to fit 9-11. We were always saying, dude, this is a God who loves. This is a God who has the answers. This is a God who wants to bring you peace. This is a God who saves. And all of a sudden, when America's in the worst tragedy ever, in the music culture, in the music world, they're looking, where's that band? And out of the thousands of bands that are saying nothing, they said, what do you, what do you guys have to say? And that was, that was huge for us. And this is what I believe, and I think you would believe the same thing, is that is God-ordained. When the enemy means for harm, we talk about this before, and I've quoted it many times in here, but Genesis 50 talks about Joseph and his life, and sometimes, man, it just don't make sense. It's tragedy, it's difficulty, it's adversity. And in those moments, God chooses certain people to say, you're my light. You are the hope that this generation needs. And that song, Alive, was a big deal. Matter of fact, backstage, a guy catches you right before and goes out and goes, that was it, man. For my son, for my kid, for my life, it's the hope of that in that moment. It sometimes it's burnt out of the darkest moments. Yeah, Alive was already number one mm -hmm. on the, in the rock uh, world. It was number one on MTV. And we, we actually, we played Battery Park two, two or three nights before the towers came down. So where we played, it was in the park. You can see the towers. We went home to do a signing and we're getting ready to do a free show in LA. And then we wake up and it was on the TV. And I still remember this day when the world was mourning, sitting in my little house and calling cars. They wanted to talk to me and I'm sitting there and I remember you're going to go live. It was like me, Lenny Kravitz, and I think like Enrique, Enrique Glaze at the time yeah. played a song called Hero or something. Right, yeah. And I remember sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go live and I have to say something. I remember just getting on my hands and my knees praying, Lord, please give me the words to say. I don't, I don't know what yeah. I'm doing. But we were a band of influence um, at that wow. time and was allowed to call and just say, hey, you know, this is crazy, but God knows everything and God, yeah. God has a purpose and a plan. There's something that's going on, but this is going to draw us closer to him. At least that's the, we yeah. should be seeking the Lord, you know. There's another verse, man, is in Proverbs. It says, man, if we make our plans, but the Lord orders our steps. That wasn't your plan to be on POD. It wasn't your plan to be the band of the, you know, again, the focus even in such a tragedy. But here's what's really cool is I'm going to take you back again because, man, he was, they've been on everything. But this is the Tonight Show. This is Jay Leno. Y'all remember Jay Leno, old school chin? Come on, y'all. For Jimmy Fallon? Come on, old people. Wake up, old people. You know what I'm talking about? Back in the day. But I'm, I'm going to hit you young people with something. This is going to trip you out because, like, who's P.O.D.? What's going on? Well, this is the Tonight Show. And look at who is singing with P.O.D. You got to look close because, man, back then we didn't have HD video. Don't hate. <laughs> you do. We didn't, all right? But watch, listen, and you'll be able to figure out. Watch who was on stage with them. Roll the tape. All right, young people, who was that? Katy Perry. Katy Perry, man. How crazy is that? Tell us the story, man. How did that happen? Or what was up with that? Um, well, you, obviously, you could tell she's more down to earth right there. You know? <laughs> she wasn't naked. I think right she now was she's one of naked us. trying to get people to vote. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. a related thing. She has clothes she, on. Yeah, she, she was one of us. She was, she was all scrubby. And um, Glenn Ballard, the older gentleman playing keyboard, he's a legendary uh, producer. He's got Grammys all over his house. He's worked with everybody out there. He discovered Alanis Morissette, worked with Michael Jackson, every rock band you can think of. Um, and she was kind of his protege at the time. Right. And we were staying up in Hollywood recording the record. Um, there was this song, 
I called for a female vocal and I asked, I asked him and he said, I got just the girl. And so she would come and hang out. He had like a studio house. It was very inviting. Right. She, we would sit down and have dinner and she would have nothing to do. She would just hang out all the time. My cousin's got video of her just sitting there picking her nose and being <laughs> real silly. And she's a kid, you know, right. and she was, she's discovering herself as well. And I, because she comes from a Christian background, we had that kind of connection and we hung out and just would be real. And um, yeah, we See, loved and her. She loved us and she went on to be Katy Perry. And this is what's crazy. And this is why I'm trying to tell you, Sonny, uh, it's, it's powerful to me. Is you see what Katie's become, she bought into the industry. You know, again, like her roots may be one thing. We talked about Jessica Simpson last night. I mean, because she's another, her dad was a pastor or whatever. And, you know, we were just talking about these people, Jessica Simpson, Katie, they would come up and go, do we listen to you? And that was cool because that was their band. But what's powerful to me is 25 years later, you're still the same, bro. You didn't sell out for the industry. You didn't sell out for money. You didn't sell out because that was going to be this or that. You know, you see it, everything else. But like, how difficult was that? I mean, in the midst of you see these things, because again, you've had success. Now some people are going, well, I don't really know you so much because that's kind of the way the industry is. But it's not about success as far as what industry concerns. Success for you is something different. Explain that. Um, and God measures success differently than we do as well. You know, for me, spiritually, the only reason why I ever agreed to be in this band was um, because the Lord had captured my heart and I wanted the world to see, or I wanted my friends and my community to see a, a different Jesus, a Jesus that I had come to know, not this institution of church or religion, um, but a Je the Jesus of the Bible that mm. I believed came and, and, and really uh, got my attention, and music was a, a way to do that. And, but we, it's been an adventure, it's been a journey. I mean, we've made, you know, there's a lot of glories. There's a lot of mistakes. We've done a lot of wrong, you know, wrong things, a lot of right things, spiritually, mm -hmm. business-wise. I mean, you're out there, and it's like we're just four kids from the hood, you know, that mm -hmm. all of a sudden are on some of the biggest stages in the world in front of millions of people, selling records, making money, mm -hmm. um, you know, invited to all the king's tables, right. you know. And so in that, you kind of play the game, but inside you're like, okay, you're trying to walk that fine line of what, what is right, what is wrong. Um, I never wanted to be perceived as some religious freak that would turn anybody away, but mm -hmm. I learned through a lot of those things, and yeah. I made a lot of mistakes, and, um, and even now, being here, it's like, I know God sees the heart, and it's like, we were faithful, and God took us through a lot of stuff, and now, you know, you continue the journey, mm -hmm. and my heart is still, after 25 years, is to see somebody come to know the Lord. We, we still tour, and when we're out, and I hang out outside the bus and talk to kids, um, as tired as I am, as much as I miss my family, as, as much as I want to quit yeah. at times, mm -hmm. um, I'm sitting there praying with some kid or some adult that's saying, dude, I was going to blow my head off until I heard this song. Or, dude, I was getting high to this song for 10 years, and all of a sudden it made sense to me, and wow. I it gave my life to the Lord. Or all these things that were so supernaturally that it's like, dude, that has nothing to do with me or my band, but this is what... I believe was the call of my life in the beginning was to let God use mm -hmm. for nobodies, <laughs> for nothings, just go and scream music yeah. and maybe somebody will listen. And to this day, it's, you still see it happening. And that's like everything to me when it's just like, hey, you guys rock and your guys band is awesome. I was like, well, thanks. But right. that doesn't that doesn't really impress me. It's when you talk to that kid, that's like, dude, I, and it happens so often. Mm -hmm that it's like, man, there's still a purpose of while I'm here. As much as I want to go home and I'm tired, right. I just got to talk to these kids that are, are still going to continue living because of the music we make. And this is what I want you to know that, again, you know, I really believe that God knows people's heart. And he gives you these opportunities, and he gives you opportunities that other people don't understand. Whether it's, and there's a lot of people trying to make it. There's a lot of people trying to get publicity or trying to get it. But let me just show you another thing. This is a, a slide from just some of the movies that their music was featured in. Now, the reason I show it to you, he hates this stuff. Like, before I got up here, he said, man, let's just don't go down that road of all about us. Dude, I have to go down that road. You're P.O.D. You know what I'm saying? And the reason I have to is because... God opened the doors for influence. 
And when you, uh, you know, I talked about Bono last night a little bit at the table, and we're talking about you two and just different people I've looked up to over the years, and Bono's another one of those guys, just because I heard Bono say this, I've never met Bono, I do not know him, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying I heard his interview, and I told you this last night, he was like, man, celebrity is currency that God gives you, and you better be careful how you spend it. And I thought, dude, that's sunny, because when I look at it, it's like, dude, you've been given a lot of currency, not just money, I'm talking about influence with the Katy Perry's, with the Jessica Simpson, with the ESPN crew, and with Carson Daly, and with all these different people. And what I thank God for, Sonny, I mean this, nobody's looking for perfect, bro. We're looking for you to keep it real, and we're looking for you to go, dude, this is who Jesus is, and this is what he's done in my life, and this is what he can do for you. And I think that's why God keeps opening up the doors, dude. So I just want to encourage you, dude, and thank you for being true, man, for hanging in there in the midst when everybody attacks, because the church attacks everybody. If you don't look right, you don't dress right, you don't play the right music, yeah. you know, but here you are, man. You're still standing strong. You're faithful through that. And I just want to tell you, thank you, man, for doing it. Thank you. That, that, um, I mean, that, that speaks to me even now because I'm not, I'm not that guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, and I remember a story with, same with Bono was like, well, dude, they ask him, why do you wear your shades? Why do you play this rock star yeah. persona? He said, well, that's because that's what you want from me. Mm -hmm. And I still can't do that. Right. As much as you get, because I'm not... I'm not an entertainer. Right. It's different. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, to be up here is still nerve wracking for me, even though I've been in front of millions of people. It's still nerve wracking because I'm not, I don't see a camera and then I'm, I'm not, I'm not right. shucking and jiving. That's not me. Right. I'm, I'm so laid back and I am normal. And that's why I know that. And just watching all this stuff, third service now, all these different things to know that, dude, this journey, this has been God and God alone because I would have never have chosen that. I've never had the courage to do that. But because I just believe that I'm, not that I'm anything, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. But because I want to, I love the Lord and because it's real to me, I'm trying the best that I can to serve him and to stay faithful. And whether I've done a good job, no, that's, that's for the Lord to decide. But I still need to be able to use that influence. Right, and, yeah. and so me, it's more on a street level, but I'm still learning to hopefully mm -hmm. I can use that to keep on for right, right, I, I want something. to. I got something for you, dude. I ain't had any other hour. It just hit me on this. And this is what I want you to hear as well, because just like I'm going to say this for Sonny, and I mean this, I mean this for you as well. So it's not just Sonny, dude. I'm talking to us, you know. But God really, just like in my head right then, he's like, okay, you remember David in the Bible, man. And you were talking about, they were trying to figure out who's going to go against Goliath. And they started going through all these cats, man. Oh, this guy's got it. Man, this guy's going to be good. And it wasn't any of those God chose David, who was nobody. He was in the fields, man, tending sheep, man. Just, and then he had this thing of going, I'm going to trust you, God, no matter what's going on. And God said, that's it, man. Man looks at the outside. But, dude, I look at your heart. I don't care if you're going for a, a promotion. I don't care if you're trying to change jobs. I don't care if it's your college career. If you think it's about promoting yourself or you think it's about, dude, it, I'm that and this is what's going on, it ain't the way God works. And, and Sonny is one living example of an Old Testament truth. It is about God looking at your heart, and he blessed you with that. And again, never trying for it, never going for it, but it's like, dude, this is my opportunity. So I'm encouraging, bro. It ain't what I think. It's, what the, it's the proof's in the pudding. That's what happens in the well, South, dog. That ain't South Town. <laughs> that's, that's the dirty South. Well, proof's in the pudding. We, we talked about this too, man. Like, I don't have a plan B, and the music industry isn't the same, and I'm so fed up with Mm -hmm. today's music you know what I mean there's mm -hmm. just just the purpose and stuff so I'm, I'm still trying to figure out yeah. what the Lord has for me some people they think well can, you know you can retire you can do whatever I'm like no, I told him we'd hire him as a pastor <laughs> would y'all hire him as a pastor I told him hey that. you might be seeing me quite yeah. often you I know? said I was like look dude don't be saying that come on down to the dirty south son we'll let you come on down you know but I'm, I mean I'm I'm still I'm just still living proof yeah. of that because even all these years later I'm still Lord what do you what do you want me to do what what how can, I, how can I love you more? How yeah. can I serve you more? And so I'm into new adventures of my yeah. life. If POD ends tomorrow, I'm cool with that. It's not, yeah. it's not my identity. And here we are. Seek first the kingdom yeah. and yeah. all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto yeah. you. And so I'm asking God, what, what do I do next? How do I keep providing for my family? How do I keep sharing yeah. the, good, the good news? Yeah. And I know God's going to open the opportunity. I'm not stressed out about it. You yeah. know, you call me to come hang out here and it's, it, dude, it, you've blessed me no. by allowing me to be here and hang out because my heart is here mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm i'm happy when i'm around the people of god and we're talking about godly things well and this is why i want him here because he is like us man we're jacked up you know we ain't got it all figured out <laughs> you know i wish i had one tattoo i ain't got any but i love hanging with people that do you know what i'm saying so i mean i'm serious 
I'd much rather be with somebody dude, who's keeping it real yeah. than a religious person who plays the game. And trust me, I'm not into politics, man. I'm not into trying to do all this other junk, man. It's just about going, dude, we're broken and we need yeah. Jesus. And this world needs Jesus more than anything else. And there are people like us, man, yeah. no matter what you look like on the outside, black, white, man, cool, not cool, tats, no tats. God is in there. And that's what I want to go into is just your appearance for a little bit, just because I think it's something that most people don't know. Sonny used to have some of the coolest dreads you've ever seen. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Dude, like, I'm talking about like just old school throwdown. Now, let me show you one of my favorite pictures. This is his next one. That's what I'm talking about right there, son. <laughs> now, the reason I show that to you is because it wasn't if just for image. There's a little bit more to that. And there's more even more on why you shaved it. Let's first start with talk to me about your dreads and then we'll go into why you cut them off. Um, again, back in the day, it was more of a humility thing. I loved, uh, it's actually in the it's scripture, it's the Nazarite vow mm -hmm. that Samson took um, because he wanted to be used by the Lord. Um, now it's popular, it's trendy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, back then it was like, oh, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Even my friends were like, why, why do, why are you going? It's like, did it? I love that humility. It's me saying I'm, I'm nothing. Like I'm, I'm going to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, in Numbers, it talks about not cutting the the, the locks of your hair. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Samson had dreads. Mm -hmm. It says that they came and they cut seven locks from his head. The New King James Version is, mm -hmm. says seven braids, but it's really seven locks. Mm -hmm. I believe that the disciples. I believe Jesus. I believe all these hardworking guys that follow the Lord. It, it wasn't a thing of glamour. It was humility. Mm -hmm. it, it was Rome. It was, the, it was the upper class that had all the, mm -hmm. the you know, maybe the products and the, right. yeah. <laughs> you know, the salons and the beauty. These were people of the streets, people of the roads that mm -hmm. said, dude, we're, we're nobody. Right. We're just, we're living our lives. We're loving God. And, um, but then eventually, obviously, it becomes kind of your identity. It becomes trendy. It becomes a look. Um, and then for me, when I was at the, just seeking the Lord more so. I felt like I had just gotten lost in the mix of all this. Mm -hmm. And when I had really just taken some time to, to seek the Lord, I just felt like God was just stripping me mm -hmm. of that. And um, I just wanted to strip away all the, whatever that was. I, I didn't have to. Right. It wasn't like God said, cut your hair. It was just like, dude, I, I'm just, I just want to humble myself. Mm -hmm. I saw a thing about soldiers who, you know, when they take all these young kids and they put them do boot camp and stuff, they strip them all down and they make them one. They, 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 they train them to be a soldier. It's not about you, it's about the cause. Mm -hmm. It's not about who you think you are, it's not your color, mm -hmm. how rich or poor your mommy, daddy might be, right. what race, you know, what language you speak. Mm -hmm. it's, you're, this is what you're designed to be. Yeah. And for me, in the spiritual sense, it was having God strip all that stuff away. And it was my prayer, it was like, God, keep, keep what you want in there. And, and this is at the highest point of my career. Yeah. So that was my identity. People, I remember even people in the label was like, what, what are you doing? Like, but I was like, yeah, I, it's meaningless. I care less about that stuff. Mm -hmm. I just want to be right before the Lord. And I just felt for me that God was saying, dude, just surrender it all to me. Yeah, and your kids actually help you cut it off, your wife. I mean, that, your wife's tripping on all that because she's like, yeah, what, yeah. What, what are you doing? Like, what, what? We were in the middle of writing a, a record and, and all kinds of crazy things had happened. And I was kind of in a whirlwind. And I came home, I, I, we recorded in LA, I got to come home, for, you know, come home for the weekends. And I'm sitting outside, my two girls and my wife's pregnant with uh, my son. And she's ready to pop. And we're sitting out there and I'm just reflecting. And then I go in, I get the camera and I say, hey, can you take some pictures of me and the girls? And so I got these pictures to this day, you know, my dreads all over them. And it's literally, by the time I cut them, they were like down to my knees. Yeah. So hanging on them and, and then all of a sudden, I have my girls take a picture of me with, you know, holding her, my wife's in her belly and my hair. And, and she's like, what are you, she knew something was up. What are you doing? What's going on? And, you know, and, and then I go inside and I get the scissors and then I just, I just say, I want you, you guys to, to cut this for me. And, and I, they tripped out. My daughters tripped out because that's all they knew. They didn't know how I look without them. This is, this is who yeah. they know. And they were crying and my wife's crying. I'm crying. And I'm just saying, I mean, that's how serious it was. Yeah. I thought I'd never, ever, I thought, dude, this is who I am. I mean, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a dread. I'm still right. a dread at heart, right. you know, the, the concept yeah. of it. And I just, we prayed, and I just said, God, I want you to take it all away. I want you to strip me down of everything. And my wife cut the first one. My oldest, she had the second. My, wow. And then 
another story, but then eventually I would go and, and bury them in, in Israel. Yeah. Wow, dude. Yeah, that's a whole other. All right, I got to lighten it up because I want to take you back again just because it's kind of fun. And just to know how serious this hair deal was, you may remember a show called Punked. Guess who got punked? <laughs> Roll the tape. Here on Punk, you only get one take. There is no take two. The mark is sunning a POD. POD is going to be on the road. They're going to think they're cruising down the highway when they run into this toxic scenario. How many people in the vehicle? Three. Three people. I need you to pull up right behind that van. You have to start stripping down. You have to decontaminate you down to your underwear. What do you want me to do? You have to strip down. <laughs> Put the right foot up. You shave or wax any areas of your body. Come on, ask me. Get you through this. Dude, my hair's all wet. Let's get metal. Can you please say colors of this, but not the word? Yellow. Color. C-O-L-O-R. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, say yellow. Say the color, but not the word. Did you go to grammar school? All right, sir, what do you see here? Looks nice. You don't see the forest with the family and the dog? Wow, jeez. Not doing too good, my friend. We're going to need to get a hair sample, sir, OK? It's not going to cut my glands. There's two options we can do. We can either cut a foot to two feet off of your hair, because that's the part that you don't want to get wet, or we can quarantine you for three to four days at yeah, the EPA lab. Let's do that. Okay. Gentlemen, we're going to have a level one quarantine. Wish to be quarantined for two to three days? In here? Is <laughs> it What's up? We're POD. We just got punk like crazy. You got punk. I got punk. <laughs> Wolf has been on it. I'm going to just tell you, you want to know why I think he's godly? Because I would have cussed them out, slapped that woman. I'd have been on the news for a whole nother story. And, dude, I watched the whole thing. He's just like, oh, man, that's, no, you know, he's just, no, oh, that's okay, man. Yeah, okay, I'll do that. I'm like, who is this dude? He's got to be Jesus because there ain't no way anybody would act like that. I was dude. ready to be quarantined, man. I wasn't yeah, he was like, touch put me my in hair. quarantine. You cut the hair, quarantine me, man. I'm cool, you know. So this is why I really do love him, and I want to get into a little bit deeper stuff. Though. Thanks for having fun with it, and, and it really does let you see a little bit. Seriously, if somebody had a hidden camera on you and it didn't go your way, how are you going to be? No. And the reason I really played that is because it really did shock me. You never really got mad. You I mean, from the beginning, you were just cool through it. And that proved to me, as silly as it is, and something the world put out there of who you were, and why your faith was serious and how that really meant something to you. I got another clip for you. It's a little bit more heavy, but this is about really your faith and how you came to faith. And once again, in a trying, difficult, dark circumstance, God did something really cool in your life. Let's roll the tape. Early 92, you know, my mom, she got sick and um, what was still playing, you know, with this band. And uh, my mom, she got sick, she ended up passing away. I know that God loved me so much that he had to take the closest thing to my life to get my attention and he took my mother at 37 years of age and I watched her die of leukemia and I watched her lay on this hospital bed dying of this cancer and this disease but yet I had never seen so much love and so much joy so much little baby girl I wish you could see her I swear she looks just like you If you can hear me, show me a sign Please send a butterfly They took this picture And uh, they replaced my wife and my mother And so I got this I got this gift, like, you know, a little picture And I was like, it freaked me out, you know what I mean? Because I was like, this is the first time I had seen me At, you know, this age Since my, you know, my mom passed on And then I seen the picture with my baby this one's kind of a trip, you know, but that's like that's actually right there is my wife's hand. But it looked, you know, so I got this my aunt my gave it to me. It was like uh, the night before, midnight before Christmas Eve. She said, well, whenever you guys get a chance, you know, come midnight, whatever, you get a chance to open it. And um, so I opened it up and all I flipped that I could put it down. Yeah, dude, it's kind of heavy on me just because... You know, I see your wife in there. I see, you know, I hear you talking about your mom. Go down that road with us for a little. Give us the background story because that is how you came to know the Lord mm -hmm. in one of the darkest, most difficult times, man. And I know it's a heavy thing, so yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Um, I come from a, I mean, my, my grandmother's from Italy. My mom's from Italy. She met a, a, a Guamanian, he's an islander off the, into the Navy on the island of Guam. And, um, 
my mother came over when she was young. You know, they had kids at a young age, rock and roll family. Just, right. you know, you, you're in the neighborhood. It's just kids go through crazy stuff. So I come from a young family, wild family. And uh, so, so I've seen a lot of things growing up, come from a broken home, divorced, um, you know, from my family, from selling drugs to just, um, you know, just surviving. And, you know, long story short, my uncle got saved and that was infectious and it started to spread through my family and I, I watched that. And I grew up, I grew up Catholic. My, my grandmother, she's the, she's an angel on earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, you know, we grew up Catholic and so I never had a problem with Jesus. I never had a problem with the things of God. I just right. didn't know him. Right. And it was a religious thing. Mm -hmm. And once my family started to go to church and they got saved, I seen a change. I, I, God started to restore family, and so I knew that this, this was real, you know. And then once she got sick, um, you know, it just kind of forced me to, to pay attention. And uh, one day, um, I was out doing my thing with my friends, was, you know. I came home high. I was trying to avoid her, and she was sitting by my room, and she was waiting for me. And she just sat me down. At this time, she had already gone through her can you know, cancer. She was in remission, um, and she had asked me, or she had said, you know, she looked at me and just said, I know you're empty, I know you're hurting, and you've lost that, that love. And she just said, son, when I die, I want to know that you and your sisters are going to be in heaven with me. And I said, mom, don't, don't talk like that. And she, she, it's like she knew, and she looked me in the eyes and said, no, son, I'm going to die, and I need to know that you are going to be in heaven with me. And I said, yeah, mom, what do you want me to do? And she invited me to this Harvest Crusade in Southern California, and, and it was awesome. It was, you know, it was, they had great songs, and it was heartwarming, you know. And I was trying, you know, and um, long story short, she got sick again, and then she went back into the hospital, and um, I remember being called to come and see her, and, and her body was just completely shutting down, and uh, I rushed in the hospital, I talked to her, it was the last few seconds I would spend with her, but her body kind of just, for like a week and a half, just went into a coma, and she was there, and then the doctor would come in every day, and he would say, um, you know, be, be prepared, she might not make it through the night, or she's not gonna make it through the night. He'd come in the day, she's not gonna make it in the day, and he would do this for a whole week, and I, I hadn't even left the hospital, I was sitting in the hospital, family's coming in, um, and then one morning he says, he's with a bunch of intern doctors, and he said, you know, it's not a medical term, he said, but um, the reason why, you know, your mom or your daughter or your sister won't let go, he said, well, because the heart runs, you know, runs, runs the body. And he said, it's a thing we call mother's heart. There's no, it's not a medical term. Mm -hmm. He said, she doesn't want to die because she doesn't want to leave her kids behind. The doctor's saying, there's a professional doctor. Right. Yeah. There's no facts, no yeah. science. He's speaking. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm having this little flashback of when my mom sat me down. And, and so that day my family made, forced me to go and shower and go home. And it's the first time I left the hospital. I went you know, got in my car in the parking lot, and um, I just, I really had an encounter with the Lord, and I just said, God, you know, if, if you take my mom, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to hurt myself, or I'm going to hurt somebody. And I just said, God, I don't want the Jesus of this world, the phoniness and the hypocrisy of this religion. I said, I want the Jesus um, of my mother, and uh, I said, God, I don't, um, I know I'm a sinner. I don't need anybody to tell me that. Mm -hmm. I said, but if you can forgive me, I just want to be in heaven with my mom. And uh, sorry, when I talk about Jesus, I get, whoo. <laughs> and um, anyways, I did that. I went home, I showered up, I came back, and then uh I whispered in her ear and I said, go and be with Jesus, I'm gonna be all right. And uh, she took her last breath. <laughs> but know, it's, a good, it's a good thing. It is a good thing, It's man. a beautiful thing. I still got nothing, you gotta talk for a minute. <laughs> I know the story, man, but it's, uh, I kind of joked about my mom smoking cigarettes and all that stuff last week, and everybody talking about it. We grew up in church, and they're like, oh, you're going to hell if you smoke cigarettes, or you're going to hell, you know, had Catholic parents, I mean, grandparents, you know, all these different things, but the same thing, man, there's something about, 
a genuine faith in your mom. And even when they're not perfect, they don't have it all figured out. They don't get it all right, man. And uh, when I knew that was a part of your story and I kind of knew what was going on, and, and I just wanted to make sure that this group, group knows that, that, you know, when you bring your kids to church and you live that life in front of them and you're yeah. making those sacrifices and you're doing the very best you can, it does matter. Yeah. And the things that you say to your kids, it matters. Yeah. You know, the way you live, the things you say. Because now, not only did it bring you to faith in Christ, it's impacted the world. Mm -hmm. The yeah. world. Yeah. I, I love what you said, man. It's, it's not a show. Yeah. It's, it's not for the world to see, but, but God does love us that much that he'll meet us in our darkest point, whether it's drug addicted, whether it's suicidal thoughts, depression, whether it's the, what, whatever tragedy you're in, God loves us that much that he'll come off the throne of heaven yeah. and meet you in a dirty, stinky parking lot in a hospital. And, and he did. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and I knew at the time, I, you know, at that time, I, I had no idea I was going to be in a band. I didn't want to be in a band, right. but I had got asked. And I thought, it, you know, it's just crazy to, to live a life for, for Christ. And it's just as crazy to get in a band and scream my guts out. Right. And, and I would do that. I would, that was part of our show. I would, you know, all these kids would come out and go nuts. And I would just say, hey, and I'd share a little bit of my story. And one day, in, I remember Spokane, Washington, a little kid, it's like cold outside, and a little, I'm talking to a kid, and he's asking my mom, he was a young kid, and then he just, I was kind of explaining something, he said, well, but that's, in a way, it's like, God did that, and so now you get to be here, and you get to share your story with all of us, and then instantly I'm like, dude, this kid gets it, dude, that's yeah. like, but he reminded me <laughs> yeah. of what I feel is a purpose and a calling in my life, yeah. is because to this day, 25 years later, there's, out of all the success and all the things that, that, that you know, that I've, I've gained, worldly things, there's no more joy than seeing somebody come to know the Lord. There's no more joy than seeing somebody get it for the first time. And it's like, it's the only reason why I still do it 25 years later. 25 years, man, of being <laughs> faithful, serving God, really, in the world, dude. Come on, no, one time, y'all. <laughs> I'm serious, it's pretty amazing. And I don't, I don't have it... I don't have it figured out, man. That I, it, this is this is a journey. Oh sure. This is an adventure walking with the Lord, and and there's been times where I've been so far away from the Lord, and there's been times when I've been mm -hmm. so close, and it's where I, where I where I strive to be yeah. on the daily. But we live in a spiritual warfare that that's just not necessarily always the case. We struggle. We go through things. Right. Well, that's what's been pretty cool, too, and trust me, you're getting the short end of the stick, so you may want to hang around for the next hour because we got talking and hanging out, but first thing I want to show you is his beautiful family, and the reason I want to show this to you because this is the sacrifice he's given us to be away from this family. In the video, you saw him proposing to his wife. Y'all are celebrating 20 years of marriage yeah, this year. Next dude. month. Come, next month. <laughs> How about that, it. man? I love it. Beautiful kids, too, man. Awesome, man. So, so cool. All right, I got to get to whosoever's because we got to wrap it up just because you understand now. And what I want them to see and hear from you is why the whosoever's? Why was it such a big deal to you? And I guess maybe it's your culture. Maybe it's you're bringing up the people you're running around with. Why is it a big deal for the heads out there, man, the, you know, the, uh, whoever it is, man, to be able to go? The, the thing is with, with these characters is that... Um it's real, man. It's re these guys are real. Mm -hmm. We don't see too much realness in our churches. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says, come as you are, but most of the time we're turning away people because they don't fit in or they're too much of a sinner yeah. or they're, they're this, they're that. And it's like, dude, that's, what, that's why Jesus came. Mm -hmm. And when I was searching again, I needed to be around real people. Dude, I, to this day, man, like I was telling you, I have more patience for sinners than yeah. I do self-righteous mm -hmm. believers. Because we're saved. Mm -hmm. The world's going to hell. Mm -hmm. But we can sit around and we can nitpick this and that. I mean, you know, he's got tattoos, this kind of music. You know, he's this, he's that. This is where he's from. It's how much money he makes. And to me, it's, it's, it's foolishness when you have a God who came down to die for us, who, who hung with the radicals. Yeah. He hung with the, the, the crazies yeah. because he came to save. Our church, this is our hospital. Yeah. We've made it a, a, a resort, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And I need, because these guys are real, they're successful in the real world, they have influence in the real world, and they face real world things. But yet, when there's addiction out there, there's uh, um, suicidal thoughts, there's depression, there's every drug, mm -hmm. every temptation known to man is thrown at you, mm -hmm. and yet they're still choosing 
to follow after God. Now, we need the help to do that. It's not a magic pill, you know. It's not a spell that says, oh, Jesus, come and my save me, and all of a sudden you got it figured out. It doesn't work that way. This is a life and a relationship walking with Christ, knowing his word, reading his word, worshiping him, allowing God to strip you, to do things. And I needed to be around real people that would do that. And these guys are real. Head was going through all his stuff. He's still, everybody, we're all still going through stuff, but we can call each other and say, bro, I'm two seconds away from hanging up the yeah. towel and calling it quits. Mm -hmm. Speak to me. Yeah. You know, love me. Pray for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Or so-and-so is, is, is dying or, you know, another this, another that. Give me something. Mm -hmm. And we do that for each other. And that, to me, that's what the church was always supposed yeah. to be. Jesus never said, build me a mega church. He said, he called us to go and, and lay hands on the sick and feed the poor, mm -hmm. cast out demons. I mean, that's, there's real demons going on in yeah. this world. And if we're not spiritually in, in sound mind and doctrine to, to notice what's going on, and I look at kids all the time. Man, I'm 43 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been playing music for a long time, and there's an emptiness. Mm -hmm. There's a loneliness, mm -hmm. and there's, there's some haunting things out there that are out to rob, steal, and destroy and kill mm -hmm. your children. And if you're not in tune and you're not walking with God saying, God, have mercy on my kids. Have mercy on my community. Mm -hmm. Have mercy on these people that are going to hell that don't know you. But yet we sit around mm -hmm. saying, look at all these sinners. And judging them, man, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Shame on us for doing that. Man, and that's why you know I love me some Sonny and some whosoever's, man. And I want you to know this church was founded on that, man. That's right. You know, I mean, that's what this, dude, there's great churches everywhere, but dude, this church is for the whosoever, man. That's why we started it. You know, that's why I'm trying to tell you, dude, man, don't do it, man. Follow who he is, man. Dude, Jesus was one of the most radical men of our time, yet we candy coat it, mm -hmm. yet we paint such a picture of this Lottie Dottie, mm -hmm. white American, blue-eyed Christianity, and it's not that. He was so rebellious. He was so radical. He went against everything that was religious, everything that was government, mm -hmm. that everything that was wrong, and he stood up for what was right, and the men that followed him, they didn't have it figured out. That's the right. 12 disciples were some of the most... <laughs> Messed up. Wackest yeah. people. Even when they walked and saw all the things that Jesus did, they still said, they would go in and out. Yeah. They would know who he was. They wouldn't know who he was. Yeah. They, they wanted something from him and not, didn't necessarily see his purpose. Mm -hmm. And yet out of the 12 guys that Jesus handpicked, mm -hmm. one denied him. Ten went on to be martyred for their faith. Mm -hmm. They didn't create big churches and live in the lap, lap of luxury. They went and they were murdered for their faith, for being real Christians. And then the only one that would survive would be, would be John the Beloved that would go on to tell us how the world is going to end. Like, this is radical stuff, but you don't know that. Yeah. The world doesn't know that because they're too busy identifying Jesus with their religious parents or their religious church that beat something into them that they run. Mm -hmm. I know more rock stars that are, that are, all, from, that are all church boys and pastors kids that say, yeah. dude, I hate it. I hate yeah. God. I hate religion. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I get it. Yeah. But what about Jesus? Yeah. The world, I think the world would be cool with Jesus if they can get past us. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the truth, If they can man. get past us saying, well, I'm, 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 I'm Pentecostal, I'm Baptist, I'm this, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm holy, I'm righteous, look at all you. If we can, if, they're sick of it, man. Yeah, man. Just keep it real, man. Do good. Yeah, keep it real, man. And that's the whole thing is, you know, it really is about following his example. And I just want you to know how thankful I am for Sonny and the stand he has taken in this world. And I know that it means something to you as well. So would you put your hands together one more time for him? He don't want it, but he deserves it. <laughs> Won't you stand right here? I want to pray for him, then I want to pray for you, man. Thanks for being patient, and I want you to listen to me, man. As I pray for him, I'm praying for you as well. God, I thank you for Sonny, and you know, God, that our hearts are so connected in that truth, God. Man, I don't want to be uh, some religious guy, man. I want to be a follower, a radical follower of you, and that means in every area of my life, whether it's being a dad, a husband, God, or whether that means, again, in the community with the overlooked, the rejected. And God, that is why this church was founded. And God, I want Sonny to know because of his influence, because of the way he stood up for it, because of his life, God, it influenced a pastor in the middle of Louisiana. He had no idea. But God, you, again, 
You order our steps. You make plans, God. You are the one, Lord, that knows exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And I pray the same for these people in here. They don't know, God, why they're here. God, but they're here because you have a plan for them. And God, they may feel broken and overlooked and rejected. But God, I pray that you would remind them that's who you came for. God, that you love them enough to die for them, to shed your blood for him, to overcome the grave for them, to give them hope. God, I don't care what they look like. I don't care what skin color. I don't care what background, how much money. I don't care what they try to portray on the outside. They could be the most together looking dude on the outside, but on the inside, God, you see our heart. So God, convict us and show us again how much you love us and how much of a plan you have for us. And I pray again for them that they would maybe on a day like today surrender. God, not walk some aisle, not raise a hand, not fill out a card. But God, cry out like Sonny did in that car and say, God, save me. I don't want religion. I need a relationship. And I know you will. I pray for Sonny as well, God, as he goes on, that you would continue to keep your hand on him. You would heal him. You would help him, God. Keep every part of your hand on his life, God, and continue to remind him of the power he has, Lord, and the influence he has, and what a grateful group of people we are that he would spend time with us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Sonny Sandoval right here, dog. What's up? P-O-D. Love you guys. Here's the good news, man. Sonny's going to take it in just a couple minutes. He's going to be right down in front of that screen. we got to catch a plane. We can't hang out all day, but he will hand out some stuff. There's some free whosoever stuff there. He'll meet you, take some pictures. And until next week, I love y'all, man. Thanks for being here. And what do we say? Peace. Have a great day. <laughs>